What do you say, baseball fans? Rye Bread Talking Baseball, episode 42. We're going AL East West as per the usual. Talking about stupid games and stupid prizes out there in San Diego. The bets have been hot and it's overflowing with superlatives. I don't even know where to start. So we go with the Rays first, of course. Rays get one that they probably shouldn't have. Yarbs is so much more effective when he has an opener. I don't know if it's mental at this point, but he got blown up early in a start. Should have lost that game, but the Rays battle back with three, three run innings. And the crooked number police got him for nine. And Baltimore ends up dropping a game that they should have had with means on the mound. It's a big win for the Rays. Now six in a row for the Rays. Padres' only other team with six in a row right now. Both those teams red hot. I expect to see Yarbs following an opener next time out. It's just the numbers are undeniable. And if any team's going to take a motion out of it and play the numbers, it's the Rays. But Yarbs behind an opener, it's stark. I don't have to tell you. I'm going to put it in the comments, but it's a huge split when he's as a relief pitcher. His numbers as a relief pitcher are just stupid. So, G-Man is back, and you can't help but think that's the only reason. No, I'm just kidding. Some mother named Randy continues to blow it up. Randy Arozarena was out of control last night. Two home runs, a double. (laughs) Brasso also got means for a home run. And the Rays usually aren't that great against lefties, but man, where they were tearing it up. When the Rays are hot, they're hot. And that's what's going on right now. It's Hill against Kramer. Hill keeps putting it together somehow, some way. And even though that's a little bit of a bam box there in Baltimore, the matchup favors the Rays. And it's too expensive. Won't touch it. But the Rays are doing what they have to against Baltimore. They have to have a crooked number against Baltimore if they're going to hang with this AL East, AL AL West. And the more I look at it, it just gets tighter and tighter. And I seem to have less of an idea who's going to be there when the music stops. Speaking of that, Houston and Oakland. These two teams look like the division winner and wild card from that out west. Because LA just simply is not playing well enough. Trout's on the IL. They've got a doubleheader today. Their pitching staff's already on fumes. And then they have seven of their next nine games against Oakland who's red hot. So I I don't think the Angels, by the time June 1st rolls around and they are starting to set out there in San Francisco, if they're 10 games out, they're going to be lucky. I I don't think the Angels are going to be there at the end at this point. And I know it's so early to count out such a talented team. If Trout wasn't hurt for eight weeks, it'd be a different story, but he is. And Shohei's apparently... A wonder, a Superman, but you can only get so much out of him. He was clearly gassed last night. I don't think he's hurt. It's just they've been relying on him for everything. He cannot continue to do everything. Shohei's the man, but I just don't see, I don't think it's going to be enough. Unless Upton and Rendon just really turn it up, which is possible. Walsh, Rendon, start hitting. Upton starts hitting. Get some slugging, some power out there at the top half of that lineup. Sure. Okay. But man, the pitching's just been so woefully bad. 233 runs against. Worst in the American League. Third worst in the MLB. Just, I don't see it getting any better and I've been watching them a lot. So enough about the Angels. Moving on. Tonight's game, Houston and Oakland. We're taking Oakland plus 108. I like Irvin. Dallas Braden, darling. Cole Swerver Nerman. Luis Garcia uh, for Houston. Pitches into the game about fourth, fifth inning. They haven't really moved him out past that. And the bullpen just gives away his games. He's one in three, but his numbers are tight. Luis Garcia. 12th worst bullpen ERA for Houston. ERA over four. So when he comes out in the fourth or fifth inning, even if they're if he's held Oakland to that point, Oakland is a relentless lineup, and you have to think they're going to get to Houston's bullpen, who got a 
much needed day off when Grinky goes eight. His road record is 3-0 and with a 1.64 ERA. Zach Grinke on the road is just out of control. Eight innings pitched, eight Ks, gave up one run last night and just took a game. But that's what you get when you sign a, a stud uh, veteran pitcher. Every once in a while he's going to get one for you, and he had it all going last night. Oakland had no answers, but that's why I'm taking Oakland today. I think the bullpen, even though they did get a rest, Houston's bullpen and Oakland's tenacity and persistence gives me a tip of the scale towards Oakland. We're taking them plus 108. We got the win last night with Aaron Savale. Seven innings pitch, eight strikeouts, one walk, two earned. And Shohei's velocity was down. It was We've covered it already a little bit, but the Angels just don't look like they're in a position to make any kind of postseason noise at this point. And we keep counting out Cleveland. I'm, I'm not mentioning them in the wild card. They just keep winning their games. So I'm in, I'm into Cleveland for their pitching and they've gotten the runs when they need it. Savali's six and one. That's not by accident because it's not like Cleveland hits. They're one of the teams that's been no hit twice. So Savali's doing it and I'm going to be looking for his price to go up next time. Speaking of that, while we're there, Rodgers was the same way. Rodgers is now 6-2, and two, gets the win. We win both the bets yesterday. We're on fire. 7.2 innings pitched, 8 strikeouts, 1 walk. McCutcheon got him for a home run, but man, Rodgers is as good as anybody going right now. And when he starts, Miami wins. He gets the win. That's a different from a lot of pitchers these days. But 7.2 innings, he's going deeper into games now. Miami still has some work to do, but when Marte comes back and they're throwing Rodgers out there with his 1.74 ERA and his 1.05 whip, they've got a chance to beat anybody with him on the hill. Against the really good teams, you wouldn't do it. But against middling or average teams, if the number's right, you got to go with Rodgers at this point. I expect him to be very expensive going forward. And... You have to be careful about those expensive games. Case in point, yesterday, KC comes back on the Brewers and and wins that game. Corbin Burns doesn't get the loss, but the bullpen gets away from him, and Kansas City gets that win, and that was an expensive game yesterday. Yelly's on the on the road to recovery. I, I still like the Brewers, despite the fact that Flaherty is now 8-0, first pitcher to... Eight wins, 2.53 ERA, St. Louis, 14-8 and eight at home. Winning their games at home, and Flaherty is just quietly dominating the National League at this point. Eight, no. Guy's on fire, and you rarely hear anybody talk about Flaherty with these top-notch pitchers, but he's top-notch, top-notch. Kluber gets a no-no, have to say it. We said he was getting better. We didn't know he was getting this much better. Texas, one of the other teams, been hit no twice, hit no hit twice. And then Seattle, obviously the other team that's been no hit twice. Back to back, no nos. And Dane Dunning on the hill for the Rangers today gives him a shot to win. But we've been all over Domingo Herman. Domingo Herman is winning his games. The game's too expensive. We wouldn't touch it. The game that's intriguing right now for me though is Boston and Toronto. Nick Pavetta, 5-0 Nick Pavetta against Steven Matz. Steven Matz with his 4.2 ERA. He's been a lot better. We've documented how he has really stepped it up. Steven Matz has been much better than anybody could have expected out of him. I, I'm not dogging that. It's just, it. I don't know. Pavetta's been excellent. 5-0. and oh. Boston wins when he pitches. It seems like that plus 115 number... It doesn't, I don't know. I'm not, I'm not comfortable with it yet, so I'm not taking it. That might change. That could change later. I've got a, got a couple feelers out on that one. Uh, Tatis last night, got to mention this. Four for four, home run, and if you didn't see it, does a, a split at second base after a steal so his foot doesn't come off the back. The guy is just freakishly athletic. He's an absolute stud. Fernando Tatis. They've won six in a row, but they're still behind the Giants. Have ma- mandated to say it. San Francisco Giants are in first place in the NL West on May 20th, 2021. <laughs> and the West just keeps on winning. 
but the, so did the Giants. So the Giants are still holding on. 0.5 uh, games. Got a half game up. So that's going to do it for us today. Oh, wait, before we do, before we go, I didn't get to the stupid game, stupid problems. In that San Diego game, a couple of fans ran out onto the field and Danny Vietti found the video in like five minutes. The guy's an animal. But the hard tackle on the guy, they're wrecking the guy out there. But it just goes to show you, you need to penalize these guys. Like if you play that stupid game, you win a stupid prize. And after... One of those security guards was down, and frankly, some of those security guards need to get on a treadmill or something. I'm not the uh, pinnacle of health, but I'm also not working as a security guard where I have to run somebody down. That one guy was beat. I thought he was really hurt. I think he was just gassed. So you need to have a little bit of a higher standard there, and it was pretty evident. But the people that were doing their job right, they slammed that guy. A couple of those security guards knew what the hell they were doing. Ooh, you can see the crowd. And you hear the crowd, you can see the reaction on the player's face. But I had to go there and say, if you do that, you get what's coming to you. And if one of the security guards dies of a heart attack because you're an idiot and ran on the field, guess what, man? You're looking at manslaughter in my eyes. Don't be an idiot. Don't run on the field. As funny as it is, it's it's a problem. And those guys are exposed. And I'm glad they have the nets now to keep these yahoos off the field. That was a disgrace. Even in all fun and games and whatnot, it's dangerous, man. You can't have that become a thing. I hope that it doesn't. So when dudes are out there on the field getting planted, so be it. So I, I just wanted to make sure that we got there. Because that was potentially dangerous, man. I, I, I didn't really like seeing that. But shout out to Danny Vietti for founding the video of what happened. I'm glad I saw it. But man, I don't want to celebrate it. But at the same time, I want to make sure that it's acceptable for those security guards just to beat the hell out of those guys who run out on the field. Treat them as if they're trying to assault the players because that's the risk that can happen with these Wahoos. So you treat everybody who runs on the field as if they're actively trying to hurt one of the players and you take them down with extreme prejudice. It's not time for negotiation at that point. It's too dangerous. It's too spot of the moment. It's too, it's too much can go wrong. You have to hammer these guys into the field and then charge them. Ban them from games and charge them. I know it's heavy-handed, but, man, the security of those players is at risk. Some of those guys were close because two of them came on at the same time, and one of the guys kind of got free. He was all over the infield. It wasn't great. So enough about that. Remember our bet today, Oakland. We got them. It's more of a heart bet, but I've been hot lately, so you might as well write it. Remember, if you want a steak or you're looking for the best bottle of wine in the city, Bascom's Chop House, Clearwater, Florida, tell them I sent you. You won't be disappointed. And if you're thinking about that dream vacation, don't forget about Bravo Beach Resort in Shargo Island, Philippines. It's awesome. We love you guys. We'll see you again tomorrow. We're going to do 162.